Welcome back to Some Star Games, the place to find new strategy games. And today we're gonna play Chaos of Voices of the Dusk again. Now this is a real quick deck but it's a free game as you probably know from the first episode. But I was able to get the premium starter pack so we get some like cooler cards. So I thought we could play this game again and I could show you the new cards. So let me just open them all at once. Because yeah, we have a lot of them. So these are the cards that we have as an option and we can here see like which are like basic, rare, legendary and etc. And presumably when we play the campaign we're gonna be able to pick from these cards, at least that's my hope. So we'll see. See exactly how that works. Now some of you might notice in the past month and we're gonna continue with this through June is that the videos in this channel are a little bit different than usual. If we have had a lot of longer let's plays, things like that, mostly Warhammer. And the reason for that is actually quite simple. I, um, the, the, it sounds a little bit ridiculous if you say it out loud, but the thing about um, a gaming channel is you can sort of get stuck in like trying to get the views. And the, in the sense that, you know, if you want to get the most views, you need to be the first to make a video about a game and you need to be very quick and you need to figure it out in the best possible way. But the problem with that is you can kind of lose the sort of joy of playing the game because instead of like enjoying the game itself, you're just trying to figure out how quickly can I learn the basics so I can make a video and how quickly can I move to the next game and etc and etc and try to sort of release the videos right before the, the game releases itself because that's what gives you the most views. And lately I have, and uh, the problem with that is, is if you become sort of frustrated with this process or um, you know, not as happy as usual. It kind of translates to like the recordings, I feel, and, and it's not as much fun to watch. I know that if I play other YouTubers, and sometimes you can like tell, like maybe they recorded this particular game the fourth time because they are kind of annoyed when they're explaining things. And uh, yeah, that happens a lot. And then, but when you watch the video, it just doesn't sound as fun as if you. If the, if the person is really excited to play the game. So lately, I've been trying to focus a bit more on playing the games that I really like and maybe that give me like the excitement and that kind of makes me want to play that I would play by myself so to speak and that's why we had so much Warhammer because I think that game is just amazing and that's why we're playing this again so yeah I, I hope you guys are okay with that um that's kind of the plan for May and June and then towards the end of the June there's going to be a Steam game demo festival and then it's going to be a race on how many games I can play during that Steam game demo festival but I'm quite excited for that one so we're gonna have a bit of a relaxed regime until the end of June and then it's going to be like crazy demos in day in day out I'm, I'm really excited for that I'm gonna abandon this campaign because I want to get the new cards I'm not 100 percent sure how exactly does the the legendary pack gives because it tells me that it gives me a pack so I don't know if actually the pack that I have being where it's going to be utilized in the campaign another thing we could do is we could try to play like against an AI like against a random AI all right so we're actually gonna go through the deck creation because I've got the premium starter pack so I have some new like options of cards so I want to kind of show you how this looks so we can pick a leader the leader will determine the types of cards we have so we could have like glory we could have wealth influence and spirit I do like the spirit I don't actually know what cards are these but I'm gonna try to go with spirit also because he looks awesome so let's do that let's go next and here we can check the cards that are compatible with the leader that I have selected. I have to pick 30 cards, so we just hope that I have enough options. And we can here, we're going to be able to see the cards of which type I have. I'm going to actually pick the cards myself, and then I'm going to show you the cards once they're actually in combat, so that you don't have to kind of wait out here with me. All right, so I've picked the card. And we can pick the background for this, it's actually cool and uh, the card back this is going to give charms to our game okay and we can acquire new charms in the market i don't think we actually have any charms but we're gonna try well actually we do have the premium amulet so we're gonna name this like sam stress magic so why not the basic amulet or the premium amulet it doesn't actually tell me what it does so i guess i'll just pick the premium and we'll pick the cliffs of terror as our background because why not oh let's we should pick the shorts it's kind of it's better with the magic so let's go and this is our beautiful deck of cards now all right so we're gonna play against uko merchant of yin interesting let's see if we can win 
Now we go second. That's great. That means we are allowed to play cards of level 12. So I'm going to get rid of these and just try to keep the hunter village and see what else we got. We deal two damage to all enemies and allies is not half bad. It does hit your hero as well, but it's pretty cool. Now they got rush, which means they can immediately attack. And the gather allows them to take back cards that they have used up because if you end up in zero, you're going to take some damage. Now I'm going to sacrifice the Drukul and Medium. And I'm going to start with deal 2 damage to all allies and enemies. Yeah, let's first use this amulet so that we can increase our cost to 2. Then I'm going to place deal 2 damage to all allies and enemies. I'm going to play my support of healing rights which will allow to heal me every turn. To, to my characters, I mean. And then I'll place a Hunter Villager. Oh, I can't place anything anymore. Okay. I would like to place an Officiant of the Sacrifice. They take damage at the end of each leader's turn, but they also get healing. So it means that they lose nothing. So let's do that because the apparition would die. So the healing on it is kind of pointless. So this is great because I can keep them where normally they would die. I can actually keep them alive for an ex for each turn. Because they'll get a drop to two and then increase to three with this healing, this support. Should be great. Oh, they can deal four to any character. Four damage to any character, so they just killed mine. Okay, it's a bit unfortunate. And they healed their servant. Okay, so he heals for two every each turn. That's pretty bad. We want to get rid of it. Now, I'm going to first remove this dramedy of... Actually, I'm going to get rid of the Barashi Witch. You can only play the Hunter Villager, but it's going to give me supplies. Which I can play and then next, when I want to use it, I can actually heal any unit that I have. Which is pretty useful. Now they can straight up attack me because unfortunately none of my characters are vigilant. But that's okay. This one is Rash, so he can just straight up attack if he wanted to. What is this? The Fortunate Cat, which invokes money. Money allows them to draw a card. Interesting. I'd love to kill this this one current guard. First of all, it's vigilant, so I have to, but also because it's doing a lot of damage. Alright. Add a journey to the unknown to your hand. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna get rid of this calf, actually. And then I'm going to play... Goods allow me to use gather to get more cards, so we're gonna do that. I can activate it when I want to. I'm also going to place the owl, which is vigilant, so they have to kill it first. And it also allows me to place the Samkala Pilgrim. Which will give me draw a card, expand one, gain plus one for turns. I actually can't... I don't think I can play this, no. But I could heal my hero. And I'm going to use Gather, because why not? And we're going to end our turn over here. I can't use any attack, but that's fine. They get themselves some options for Gathering. If we had some options to expand enemy cards, that might be useful, but... Right now, there's just not much we can do about that. Okay, thankfully they're killing the characters and not the hero, which is pretty good for me. I could kill their servant, which would be great because then they can't heal. But we do have to... no, actually we have to attack this first. And it would kill my... Let's try an enemy character with health 3 or less. Okay, let's first draw cards so that we can gain some new stuff. We'll get rid of the Sneaky Wolf. Which allows me to gain... Let's place a Barashi Witch. Hmm. I'm gonna draw more cards. 
Give plus one health to all allies and gain plus one play for turn. Let's do that. So now I could use this Dromedary Bartel to hit this Vigilant character and then I can use my card to kill it. So let's do that. I'm going to be able to use this Deadly Exploration to kill this character because otherwise they do way too much damage and I don't think you can afford that. And the Lost Asensu, which means they lose health at the end of each turn, but they should heal it back if they don't die from the healing rights, I hope. Oh, they have another character that's vigilant. Oh, I hate those. They're doing a lot of damage. It's not great. The witch is doing more damage now, which is good. Yeah, with four damage, I can kill the vigilant character and I'm not going to die, which is nice. Right. Then you dedicate another card, gather one and draw two cards. We'll start, okay, we, we could play this. And dedicate the Vile Taparin and then place the Tercalian Healer. I think we'll try that. Now we're going to sacrifice the Vile Taparin. And we draw two more cards. I think what I'd like to do is grab this Tercalian Healer so that I can heal myself. Now I'm going to play the Barashi Witch to kill, uh, again, the, the Vigilant character that they have. And then I can do two more damage to kill... We could kill this. I think we gotta kill the healer. I will lose my character as well, but I don't like the fact that they keep on healing. I think we'll end our turn here. They kill my Barashi, which is gonna be a bit unfortunate. What is this? Expand two. They're losing their cards, so they should take damage from the card soon. But they keep having characters with a lot of HP. What's protection? The next time this character would receive damage prevented. Okay. The first time we hit him, it's pointless essentially. I can invoke apparition. Sure, we'll sacrifice this essential tap around. We'll invoke an apparition. I'm gonna use a settler. Wait, if I use a settler, I can use it to kill this thing. It will kill the settler back, but it will stop the protection from this character. And then I can still do two damage with my Tercalian Healer. We'll do two damage to the cat. And I can grab four apparitions that spawn us because I can only have four characters. Add Mystical Overload. Okay, so that's good. So I could destroy any card and take three damage. I could dest destroy this Barcelized Brute. I think I'm going to do that. I'm gonna do because that's three damage to me, but he would have done more damage than that. And we'll end our turn again. Now they can do five damage to me, which is not ideal. Oh, the armed novels are super irritating. I hate them. No! Why does everyone have protection? Okay, but they're not hitting me, which is good news for me. But they can do a lot of damage. Okay. If any of your characters is damage, invoke an Aspen Antidote. Alright, we're gonna get some healing on ourselves. And I'm gonna play the healer, I think. I think we're gonna have to kill this character. And I'm gonna sacrifice the Brave Settler because what we can start doing here is we can actually start grabbing characters from this list, some that have like high damage, for example, the Vile Taparant or uh, something else that we find useful because we now have the cause for it. 
Now I'm hoping that it'll take some damage once he goes to zero. Uh, the tutorial wasn't fully clear whether like I have to get him to zero or whether he'll just take damage. No, I think I'll just take damage anytime because he's in the spray. Yeah, he took five damage. Is it once or is it twice? Or is it like at the end of each turn he'll take five damage? I, I don't know actually. Okay. When you receive damage, all friendly characters gain plus two attack. That sounds pretty useful. We could play that first, and then maybe the Dromedary of Barsayal. That sounds pretty useful. Let's do that. We'll place this. And we can do one attack to somebody. Let's do one attack to this. So now we take damage and we increase our attack. Oh, it didn't activate? Oh, I would also love to gather because I need more cards, definitely. And I can't play anything else, so I'm done. You can only do 13 damage to me if he goes all in on my on my hero. Oh, he's taking 10 damage now. Okay, is it gonna kill him? So next time the despair should kill him. Oh no, I think we're dead. Because he can focus she can focus all of her attacks on me, which I believe should kill me. Or not, because I, I don't know what happened here, I'll be honest with you, I don't know why she died. I think maybe she used like a card to expand or something, and that's what, because she didn't have the cards, that's what killed her. Not really sure, regardless, we won, which is super cool, and that's all that matters. <laughs> this game is a bit difficult in single player, I would say. But I, I mean, I guess the focus is playing against other people. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, write down in the comments, and you can click on the right to watch some other the Deck Builders to repair on this channel. I'll see you there.